Hi everyone, Lisa Stone's Peck of Spellbound Miniatures here. Today we're going to be making this really fab farmhouse style X leg coffee table from mat board and craft board on the Cricut Maker. If you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, do subscribe to make sure that you click notifications to be notified of any other videos that we release. We've got some really exciting files coming up for you. Um, if we go over to Design Space first, when you import this file, you have the option of also labeling your pieces to make it easier for construction. And that takes a little bit of an extra step in design space if you'd like to do that. So we'll pop over there now and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so we're in design space and we've got a new canvas. We're going to upload and bring in the coffee table SVG and insert it. And we'll just reduce the screen size down a little bit. Check that it's the one inch square so that you know that it's in 12 scale if you want to 12 scale. And then we can hide the green square. And you'll notice that the labels are here on top of the respective pieces. But at the minute, they're all saying cut because when you import an SVG, the text comes in as cut and we don't want it to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is change that to draw. So if you click on the label at the top, it selects everything in that um, under that label. And then if you press the shift button down and click the next one, it selects those two. So we just shift and click all the way down on all the letters. There's quite a few of them. there and we go over and click line type and change it to draw and then you'll come over here and you'll see that all the letters say draw and then the other shapes are below them so click off them and then what we want to do they're grouped at the moment so we want to ungroup them and if we clicked make it at the moment you'd see that it wants to still draw all the letters first and that's because we haven't attached them to their shapes. So we come back to the canvas and although now because it's changed it to draw, it's changed the colour of the text, it's still there. So if you select that top layer, you'll see it's highlighted the letters for the top and also the shape of the top we go down and we click attach and then if we click make it you'll see that it has put it over onto this mat now with the mat board is which is in black and it says draw and then cut so it now knows it needs to draw on one of these pieces before it cuts them so we work our way through we know we've done the top layer we select the next craft board layers that's why they're in red and again we click attach there are no labels on these pieces we do the three base layers click attach and then we do the base pieces because again there are letters to be drawn on there so now when we click make it we've only got two mats one is matte board one is craft board and they both say draw and cut and it's probably easier to see here so that when you um, put this mat in the machine it will come out with all the pieces labelled and then cut out and that makes it easier for you in assembly. Okay so we've cut the pieces out of craft board and mat board that we wanted. This coffee table that I've made before I've deliberately done in some pieces in a grey mat board and then white to give you sort of an easier view on camera if it's all white some layers don't show up and so essentially it's constructed we have the two base pieces we have single layers of craft board building up on the base then we have our X legs then on the top part we have two layers of craft board each time going out in steps on this model I've just done one layer on the top uh, if you wanted to cut a second layer 
it just makes that then a little bit thicker and it, it's up to you what look you'd like. I've also, on at the end of this video, I've cut a piece from basewood and I'm going to put that on this one to show you what a natural wood top would look like. And then also this bit in the middle is optional. It's quite handy just for displaying items. You don't have to put that in if you don't want to. So when you've cut them out, you'll have all these pieces here. These pits are quite obvious. They're the X legs and we sandwich two of them together each side. If you don't have mat boards, you could make all of this in craft board. These ends here are actually five layers of craft board. I don't know if you can see that. Difficult to see the layers. So if you don't want mat board, just cut extra layers of craft board and then glue and sandwich those together. And the first bit of construction is very easy. Wherever we've got two layers of something, we're going to glue them and press them together and let them dry. So we've got the TL3 is the top level 3, the TL2 is the top level 2 and so on and the BL3 is the bottom layer 3, 2 and 1. Now whilst the base and the top three layers are pairs that get glued together, as are the X legs, they're pairs that get glued together, the base layers 1, 2 and 3 are single layers you could double them up, that's the best thing about our files and this method of construction is you can add more layers, you can take them away, that's up to you, but the, to exactly replicate what I'm doing here, we, you take the base layer one, which is the biggest one, you would glue on base layer two, so that it's just inset around the outside, and then base level three goes on again, so that's just set round the outside and then you can see there that we start oh, can I get that on camera we start to build up the layers and it just creates sort of a nice gradient effect so that's what I'm going to do now glue all the pairs together and then glue the three base layers one on top of each other I use Ailing's tacky glue and um, I just use a glue spreader to make sure it's a nice even coat. So I'll glue and press those together and I'll, then we'll come back. Now sometimes you'll find with matte board or a particularly new matte that a layer of the top layer of paper might get stuck to the matte and comes off. If this happens, and it usually only happens on one side, just make sure that that piece faces inwards when you glue the two pieces together. And then no one will ever know. Now if you'd like to make the optional insert, you'll get the three other pieces that are left. They're all the same height, but you'll notice that you'll need to put two of them on their side and they become either side. And then the other one goes in the middle. So we need to put glue on one edge of the middle piece. And I normally stick this down and eyeball it, but if you'd actually like to measure it, measure the whole width and then put a mark halfway across. Mine was, I think it's 36 all the way across, so halfway is 18. This was just slightly smaller scale, this one. And then you could draw a line there, or you can just sort of line up the front and back dots. It's up to you. Once you're happy that's level and doesn't stick out either end, so they're all flush, just press that so that it's square. 
wipe off any excess glue and then you can mark up the other side draw a line if it's easier and then put glue on the other edge and glue that on and you want to make sure that it's square it oops it's a little bit um, I'd say delicate and it will move but once you glue it in place on the coffee table it doesn't move after that so just keep it as square as you can whilst it's drying but there is some movement afterwards Okay, so they're now pressed and dry, and we've got the top three pairs of craft board, and I, if I do label them, I tend to glue my labels into each other so that you don't see them when you've finished building it. If you were going to paint it, you'd need extra layers of paint where the labels are, so hide them where you can. Um, and then we've got the bottom three layers of craft board. Can you see that there? And the two base layers, and then the X legs. So it's really, really simple. I like to glue the base layers onto, um, ooh, there we go, the base layers onto the two base pieces. And again, they just inset slightly all the way round to give a nice gradient effect. So I'll be gluing those two pieces together and pressing them. And then I'm going to glue these top three layers, the smaller onto the medium, onto the large and pressing those two. And then when they're dry, we'll come back. Okay, so the next thing to do is if you want to install the little shelf, um, it goes on to the base. I've marked where it would go and it's at 31 millimeters and 69 millimeters across. Um, but you could do it by eye, you don't have to mark it. So I've just done sort of a mark on each side and I'll just make sure I line up those corners. So I do those next. And I can get my glue to come out. And just make sure that the edges of these these bits are level with the edges of the base. Make sure that it's square. And then we just want to put the two X's on again. They go onto the inside sort of line up with that edge of the of the smallest layer
and they should be nice and square. That's the great thing about the Cricut Maker, it cuts the edges so square that they kind of stand up where they should. Do the other end. Okay, so I suddenly changed my mind because I've already made one with the central thing. I decided I'd take that one back out again. And then that has left me, because I've put the glue on already, some marks there. So to cover those up, I've just cut another piece of craft board by hand just to fit in there. So I'm going to glue that on. Then I'll glue the top layers on and we'll have a completely open coffee table. And then what we'll want to do is to make sure that the top edge of the X legs go onto the smallest piece of the gradient and along with that edge there as well because the smallest piece of the top is the same size as the smallest piece of the bottom make sure that it's square. It, there is a little wiggle room there, so um, when it's wet, just make sure you keep it square until it's dried. Wipe off any excess glue. And then I do like to put a weight on mine once I know that it's square and it's happy and just press the edges down. But be careful when you put the weight on, you want it to be very balanced, otherwise if it's slightly off it might push it either way. So um, it's fairly robust though. I just think a the extra weight just makes the seams of the joins look better. Okay, so that's now dry, it's nice and sturdy. I've got my piece of base wood I haven't varnished it yet. I want to glue this on and then press the whole thing so that this is sort of pressed onto there and then I'll varnish it. Doesn't matter which way round you do that. It's just uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I think it's easier to get all the building done now. So I'm going to put glue on this surface. And of course, this is where you could, you could have already have put the top on uh, if you're going to do one or two layers of the top piece like the bottom. Um, and then it would look like this one. And again, we just want to make sure we've got a sort of even amount of a gap around the edges. So that you have a nice overhang. I think it looks a bit more realistic just to have that, that overhang there of the wood. Press it all down. And then again, I'm gonna put some weights on top of it. And leave that to dry. And there we have it. With the base wood top, needs a matte varnish but it's dried and without the insert uh, and there it is with the insert Ooh, there you go so you can see them side by side this one i used some matte board that i had to hand um, obviously the colors aren't right but it's just to show you kind of with and without the central bit um, and again using craft board layers for these x's and matte board for those can't really tell the difference so it doesn't matter which one you've got 
and if you wanted you could just do the um, white top here on the white top matte board top which I've got in white here um, and then you can spray paint these um, acrylic paint these whatever color you like now if you don't like to see the layers in your matte board or craft board you can run a bead of super glue across these layers and it's self leveling and when it dries you can paint it and it becomes nice and smooth and if one layer isn't enough just do a second bead and then that's all you need to do and the layers will disappear if you want to add the insert once you've built it that's not a problem either way I think it's a really nice stylish coffee table and it fits perfectly into a modern day setting or a farmhouse style country setting don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and click subscribe if you haven't done already. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you soon.